Welcome back, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, all my beautiful fire signs. I am so excited to be back doing readings for you. It's been a few weeks, but I'm back. My energy feels really settled, so I'm really happy you're here. If this is your first time here, the way that I do these readings is that I'm tapping into the collective energy for all fire signs that, like I said, that's Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And I'm just reading and interpreting the energies that are coming through. I do this by using tarot cards and oracle cards or a mix of both. Sometimes I use a spread, sometimes I don't. Your energy is the most important thing here. What I'm doing is I'm tapping into your energy, I'm praying over the cards beforehand, and I'm just, like I said, seeing what comes through. So if you're here, welcome. If you haven't yet subscribed, go down and click the button so you never miss a reading, and let's get started. Today I'm using a spread. Um, when I'm These readings are choppy sometimes like what just happened this is non-rehearsed and i'm trying not to edit them as much now but so where was i going with this i don't know anyway the fact is that i'm not editing that out and i'm just gonna keep going um oh these readings are timeless that was my point hello these readings are timeless so whenever you're here watching this video this is when this message is supposed to come to you and it may not may not make sense right now but it may make sense for you in the future so just keep that like time is not linear time is flowing um sometimes it loops back on itself oh my gosh i have a super cool story to tell you guys so speaking of time yesterday i was in the woods taking a walk and our woods are pretty secluded and yesterday was a bit rainy so there's not as many people walking through and sometimes I'll encounter people on the trail and like see them walking by and we do like the Swedish nod, like, hey. But yesterday it was so weird. Like I encountered people on the trail and they weren't running or anything. It was just other walkers. And the trails kind of loop back on each other at different spots, but I was doing like a bigger perimeter walk. And I ran into the same people three different times, like three different people I saw, I saw them again three different times. And I was like, something's overlapping with like time and space and continuums and loops and all this stuff right now. So that was pretty cool. Just felt like I would let you guys know in case anybody else has been going through like some type of like energy overlap right now. Um, when I'm filming this, we've just passed the summer solstice of 2020. So the veil is thin, there's a lot of new beginnings, we're moving into the second half of the year. There were also a ton of astrological events going on, like there was um, a new moon, a solar eclipse, which they called the ring of fire. We've got Venus in retrograde, Venus rebirth happening, Mercury retrograde. I keep looking out the window because <laughs> I have this beautiful like summer scene outside my window and it just keeps like drawing my attention and I haven't sat in this like hot seat for a few weeks now and I forgot how lovely the view is here so <laughs> we're just gonna roll with it but so I'm doing this summer solstice spread today even though we've just passed it um, I got this solstice spread from one of my spiritual mentors Jen Blumenthal I'll link her down below she's awesome I belong to her intuition school I've been doing psychic spring cleaning with her um, she taught me how to read Oracle cards. She's just all things great. So, um, I'll link her down below. Definitely check her out if that sounds like something you'd be into. Um, but so she posted this summer solstice spread the other day and I did it on myself and on my husband and it was phenomenal. It is really strong and it gave me a lot to think about and a lot to work with. So we're just going to see what comes through. It's a pretty heavy spread. So we're just gonna work through it. I uh, meditated over the cards, prayed over them before I started recording. And I got this mental image of like this light being coming through, this really beautiful light being. It made me so happy. I was filled with, I, there's, oh, what's that called? Is it like a Mandy Moore movie from the late 90s or early 2000s? And I think it was called Jesus Camp. And she's like throwing this trophy. She's like, I am filled with Christ's love. Uh, that just came in my head as I was talking about this. So I am filled with the light. Um, and also that heart song, These Dreams, has been going through my head for like the past week on repeat. And while I was also getting ready for this reading, I just kept hearing like, these dreams go on when I close my eyes. Every second of the night, I live another life. I think that's what she's saying. But like, remember mu ugh, 
I'm acting like I'm so old. I know I'm not. But remember when music wasn't auto-tuned and like you would hear the scratch in someone's voice and there's something about her voice in that song where you're just like, oh girl, you got it. Like you are going through it. And so it just made me think like, if you take that song and you think of like, you are going through it, like you can hear it when she's like, like she's really like uh, in it, in that grit in that feeling of like, I'm so frustrated. I just gotta uh, break out, be in love. Like, why can't this be easy? And then that light being came out, just being like, you just gotta fill up the dark areas with light because the shadow is created when you have the light. You can use the light to heal the shadow. And I also saw this image like coming out of the light being that was visiting or coming through and it was this um I don't know what tribe it would be um, because I don't know ceremonial headdresses of different tribes or different ceremonial garb of different Native American tribes but it, it struck me as a Native American um elder or warrior warrior uh with a headdress full of feathers and um a lot of eagle energy came through with this being. And I would just encourage you if that message feels like it resonates for you to go and Google eagle spirit animal and see um, what imagery comes up and if that resonates with you in any way. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just gonna take a quick sip of my coffee. Look at me drinking on camera. I've never done that before. <clears throat> so. Gen B, Summer Solstice Spread. So the first question for the Light Seers Tarot is what creation wants to be birthed through me right now? And I don't know if you just saw that, but this card just jumped right out. And this is number 13, death and rebirth. So what creation wants to be birthed through me right now? Death and rebirth. I'm gonna pull the whole spread so I can read it as a whole and not just go through every card as it comes up because there's gonna be a deeper meaning when they are all out on the table. Who is this creation for, please, for these fire signs? Who is this creation for? Okay. Oh, this is my favorite card in the deck. This is the Ace of Wands. <clears throat> Excuse me. What must these fire signs do to share this creation with its people? Oh, Ten of Pentacles. Heck yes. How does it want to be brought into the world? <clears throat> Excuse me. Queen of Pentacles. Also a heck yes. And what is the purpose of this creation? Wow, you guys, this is such a powerful spread. Oh, Ace of Cups. Okay, so automatically, I'm seeing, uh, we've got two pentacles, out of the five cards, I know it's only five cards, but out of the five cards on the table, you've got two pentacles, which is earth energy, grounding. So that's a message that automatically is coming through for me is don't forget to ground yourself. Uh, I, I just heard that song, open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. Maybe it was the get on the floor thing, but anyway, there you go. You also have two aces. Ace! So these are the highest cards of their suit. And I'm just feeling like this is your highest calling. This creation of the summer solstice that wants to be birthed through you is associated with your soul's highest calling. So just keep that in mind as we go through. Also, um, yeah, there's only one numbered or one, you know, number card on the table, which is 10 of pentacles. Of course, death is also numbered, but that's 13. But the 10 of pentacles, 10 Closing out a cycle, which leads me right back to this death and rebirth card, number 13, okay? So I love that what creation wants to be birthed through you right now. And I think this is all about, I love also in the hood, like in where the face would be for death, it's a scene from the woods. <laughs> so, which is taking me back. This is how I read, this is how I interpret, okay? Like I'm following my intuition, I'm following the breadcrumbs. So I just mentioned my walk in the woods yesterday, kind of for no reason except for the time energy thing but here's that walk in the woods coming back so i feel like the creation that wants to be birthed through you right now and it's saying death and rebirth so the word birth is right there y'all but it's that wood scene where it's like going back 
and closing out old energetic loops, going back, revisiting times that keep, you can call it karma, you can call it your life mission, you can call it lessons, you can call it your north node, whatever you wanna call it, there's something that keeps recurring and overlapping and you see it once and you're like, oh, there it is, hi, I acknowledged it. And then you go further on your path and it loops back around. And you go further on the path and then another thing loops back around and another thing. And there's something about the number three where I said like there were three different people that I saw looping back around. I feel like there's something in that three loop for you. But so I feel like what you're being called to birth is a closure actually. like. You think of birth, you know, the antithesis to birth is death. But what I'm feeling is that you're actually being called to birth that death process, like closing out those loops so that way you can move into the next phase. So it's, and right now we're, uh, while I'm filming this also, we're in Cancer, astrologically, which is about clearing out the old muck. But it's very Walden Pond energy for me. It's very anti-establishment things are coming through. But there, there's something about those loops that I felt in the woods, going back and revisiting and actually getting into what these loops represent for you. Is it a relationship that keeps showing up? Is it a relationship archetype? Is it a victim mentality? Is it um, a feeling of loss? Is it grief? Do, are you constantly grieving? Are you constantly moving? Moving house, trying to find your way home? You know, what what's in there? And like, then shine the light down into it. Let your light being, let your higher self look at this from 30,000 feet. You know, if it is, I'll take the home example. If, you, if you're constantly packing up your stuff and moving to house to house to house to house and you're tired of it, you know, maybe you're moving house to house to house and you're just like, hey, this is the way of the world and I love it. That's, that's one thing. But if you're moving all the time and you're just like, why can't I just find a place to call my own? Why can't I put down my roots and really sink in? What I feel like you're being called to do in that instance is really look at like, what are your patterns for how a home is created? What kind of home did you come from as a child? Was it a home that always felt like turmoil was happening, that you, would, that you were unsafe? Is it um, a place that was always transient? And so that's what you've brought into your adult reality. You know, really like looking at it from a higher perspective and seeing like, what am I running from? Where am I trying to go? What direction am I trying to take? And then letting light and love, love, really go and guide you through the darkness. You know, maybe it's gonna be clearing out trauma. Maybe it's gonna be finding a therapist. Maybe it's gonna be, you know, there are many maybes here. But what I'm feeling is that there's a way to use that light that I saw before to shine, to illuminate the shadows and guide you through. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who is this creation for? Ace of Wands. Oh, this is like the ultimate light for me in this deck. This is gorgeous. And her pineal gland, her third eye, is flaming. And especially for wands, like this is the pinnacle of us. Wands are associated with fire signs. And so like this is our greatest embodiment to me. This ace of wands, like this is the highest expression of our fire nature, of our fiery nature. And so I feel like, who is this creation for? This is for you at your best. Sorry, my camera just shut off, which it does after 12 minutes. So I had to get up and turn it back on. But so this is you embodying the best parts of your fiery nature. Not see, I, I feel I'm getting this image or this situation where it's like being told that you're too much, being told that your fire is too bright, being told that you're too out of control, you're too chaotic, like all these, all the shadow aspects of fire where it's like, you can get burned, it can be dangerous, it can burn down buildings, it can um, sneak up on you in the dead of night, it's used as a weapon. Fire can be, the shadow aspect of fire is that it can hurt you and it can be used as a weapon of destruction. The light aspect of fire is just that, it's light, it guides the way, um, it can help you cook your food. It can help keep you warm. It can help your, you know, keep your home fires burning. Um, you know, you get, oh, the smell of baked bread, you know, come on. So I'm just saying like, 
this creation is for you to close out those loops so that way you can start living in the light aspect of your fire energy so you're not constantly being told like you're too much you're destructive you're chaotic you're this it's like no you're um burning brightly and you illuminate the way for others you're a way shower you're a light worker so just this this thing that you're doing is for you uh, what must you do to share this creation with its people? Ten of Pentacles. This to me is the ultimate family. It's like closing out old energetic loops that you have open with family. And I feel like this has to do with like mother father energy where there were things left unsaid. There were hurts left unacknowledged either on their part or your part. And I'm not saying that you have to confront your parents, but confront the idea of your parents, confront the trauma of your parents and realize that they were also, they had unhealed trauma. They were also going through their own stuff, but we didn't have the language a lot of the time as parents, you know, of different generations. We didn't have the time, the language, the resources to acknowledge like that there's another way and that we need to be doing better and like how things actually affect children. So I feel like for you to share your creation, like this closing out to its highest degree with yourself, that you need to start um, really digging into like some type of parental trauma or drama that's just been kind of left untouched and shine your light on it. Heal it for yourself. Forgive them. Forgive yourself. Give it grace. Give it light. Give it love. Um, how does it want to be brought into the world? Queen of Pentacles. She, to me, is the ultimate mother. She's cool. She's calm. She's collected. She's got her head on her shoulders. She's looking toward nothing because her eyes are closed. <laughs> her eyes are closed. But it's just this, like... She's not a mother who is going through, like, these typical Hollywood labor pains. She is calm. She knows what she wants. So I feel like this needs to be brought into the world in a very calm way. Like it's not dramatic, it's confident, it's elegance, it's It's that word grace is coming up again. It's gonna be calm. This is not chaotic, it's not fast moving. She's not in a rush anywhere. This wants to be brought in piece by piece. Building the house, I, I have my, heart on my, uh, my hand on my heart so I wanna acknowledge that using your heart chakra, really tapping into what's in here and letting it take its time. Birth can take a long time, but she's not, she's not in a rush. She doesn't feel, she's not questioning anything. She's effortless, beautiful, elegant. That's the energy. Grounded, grounded earth mother. And what is the purpose of this creation? Ace of cups. And this one, it's, hands at the heart and it looks like a bowl with a heart in the center and there's something flowing out of it so I feel like that's it it's tapping into your heart chakra finding out what needs to come out through you and that's the purpose it's to release whatever is weighing on your heart because once you can release like the hard candy shell you know like an M&M then that the candy can begin to flow. The chocolate can begin to flow. Like there's something about like breaking the shell that you've had to create around your heart so that way you can allow the love to flow again. You can allow the light to flow through you instead of getting stuck in you. Where like the goodness wants to flow up from the ground through you, out through your crown chakra, but it gets stuck here somehow. So it's like the purpose is to like, Open this window so everything can, you're just a continuous flow of light and good energy. This is really beautiful. I feel like this is an amazing spread for you. I am so excited for you. I can't wait to hear how this is playing out. Definitely leave me a comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back. So thanks for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye, fire signs.